Hey Mike Six here. Uh, let's give you a, a bit of help if you're stuck on uh, some of these questions. Uh, remember, I'm not giving you the answers to these exact questions, I'm talking about similar ones, so don't copy. Uh, you need to think about what I'm doing and then apply it to these questions. The formula of calcium phosphate is CA3PO4 twice. Uh, how many calcium, how many phosphorus, how many oxygen atoms? Uh, well, let's, let's not do that one, let's do uh, aluminium sulfate, say Al2SO4 three times. Uh, in this example here, uh, how many aluminium atoms are there? It was two aluminiums, because there's a little two after it, so two times aluminium. Sulfur, brackets, okay? Whatever's inside the brackets is there that multiplied by that many times. Sulfur here inside. This is S1, there's no number after the S, so there's a one there. Okay, there's not four sulfurs, there's one sulfur. S1, sulfur one times three, so it's three times sulfur. And O4 in the brackets times three. Four times three is 12 oxygens, 12 times oxygen. Okay, so you need to apply that to that example. Sodium reacts with sulfur to form the compound sodium sulfide. Sodium sulfide is ionic. Complete the table to show whether sodium and sulfur are metals or non-metals. Well, let's do, um, let's do magnesium oxide um, um, as an example, I suppose. Uh, magnesium oxide, uh, is, that's also ionic. Okay, we know it's ionic because ionic compounds contain both a metal uh, and a non-metal. Okay, so that tells us it's ionic bonding. Now, if you can't remember what's, met what's metallic and what's non-metallic, periodic tables here. Remember, we have this, uh, this, this diagonal line that, that comes straight down here. Okay, starts there and then steps down. Okay, the whole way. If it's this side of it, and it, it, does, it, does, continue, it does continue there. All right, if it's this side of it, it's a metal. If it's that side of it, it's a non-metal. Hydrogen, for example, is a non-metal because it's on that top side. This side, metal. Well, magnesium's there, so it's a metal. Oxygen there, it's a non-metal. If it's a metal and a non-metal, it's an ionic bond. Describe in terms of electron transfer how sodium reacts with sulfur atoms. Well, I'm not going to do sodium and sulfur. I'm going to do magnesium and oxygen. Magnesium's got an atomic number of 12. Oxygen's got an atomic number of 8. Okay, a picture is worth a thousand words. Now, in chemistry, we can do explanations and our descriptions through diagrams, and that's often the best way. Now, labelled diagrams are even better, so, I, so, so do label your diagram up. So let's draw magnesium first. Uh, magnesium's got dot for nucleus, so it's going to have two electrons on the first shell, eight electrons on the second shell, uh, and two and eight make ten, so that's going to be two electrons on the third shell. One, two. Oxygen, atomic number of eight, therefore two electrons on the first shell, and two and six makes eight, so it's going to be six electrons on the second shell. Okay, so how do these bond together? The magnesium can either gain um, six electrons to fill its outer shell or lose two. It goes for the lesser number, so it's going to lose two. Oxygen can either lose six or gain two. It goes for the lesser number, so it gains two. So the electrons from the magnesium okay, are transferred over to the oxygen. So I want, I'm going to put two arrows down. If I use two arrows, it shows, hopefully... Clearly with my diagram, two electrons are transferred. I'm going to label that one E minus transfer. And we're also going to label this arrow here, electron transfer. Now hopefully with these arrows, we can see the negative charge is going towards this uh, atom here. This negative charge is going towards this atom. And it's one negative charge, two negative charge. So we can label this one, this one therefore, two minus. And that's going to be the O2 minus ion that is formed. Uh, if this one's going to be negative, this one has to be positive, and it's lost two electrons. This is going to be Mg2 plus. Okay. Now, if I was doing an exam, this I would definitely write a sentence about this now, explaining that. Uh, having said that, I'm going to leave that there. You can do a, you can do a sentence explaining yours. Okay. Uh, but I'd like a, a diagram similar, but for sodium and sulfur, not for magnesium and oxygen. Table shows the formulae of several ions. Use these to work out the formula of the following compounds. We've got lithium sulfate. Okay, so find lithium here, it's uh, Li plus, and find sulfate here is SO42 minus. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, uh, sort out a formula for, 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 for those two. Well, let, let's imagine we're not doing lithium sulfate. Uh, let's imagine, what shall I do? I'll do uh, calcium and. I'll do calcium nitrate. 
Okay, uh, so if I was doing calcium nitrate, see, I'd write Ca2 plus and NO3 minus. Now, to do formulae, we have to have these positive and negative charges balancing out. So you have to ask yourself the question, are they more positive or are they more negative or are they the same? Well here, there's two positive and one negative, so there's more positive. So we are therefore going to need to increase the number of negative ions. Okay, so I've now written another whole nitrate ion. It has to be NO3 minus. That's not three minus, when you have a nitrogen and three oxygens together, it carries a one minus charge. Okay, so you have to have the whole nitrogen and three oxygens to get a one more minus here, one more negative. So I've now got two positive and one two negative. So that's going to be Ca, and now we're going to write NO3, and we didn't. We had one of those, two of those. Now you put a two there, but that's confusing. That looks like thirty-two, doesn't it? Uh, and the two is not just about the oxygen, it's about the nitrogen. So we need to put the brackets around the nitrate now. So the whole idea is we have positives and negatives balancing out. So that's with brackets. You know, if we were doing one, uh, if we were doing one without brackets, uh, say uh, lithium oxide, we'd write LiO, Li plus and O2 minus. Okay, here, um, do we have more positives or negatives? Here we have more negatives, so we need more positives. So I'm going, to I'm going to need to write another positive there. So I've now got one, two lithiums and one oxygen. Now we don't put brackets around lithium here because it's just one uh, element. So it's Li2O. So we have to have the positives and negatives balancing out, and you can do those three now. Okay. So the next question here is uh, an atomic mass question. It's about sulfur. Sulfur is made of two naturally occurring isotopes, sulfur 32. Uh, and sulfur 34, 95% is sulfur 32 and 5% uh, is sulfur 34. Well, I'm not going to do this question, I'm going to do a very similar one. I've used this example before about lithium. Uh, lithium is made of two uh, different naturally occurring isotopes. There's lithium 6 and lithium 7. Now, we, we would write that uh, like this if we were writing in a question. Lithium dash. 6 and lithium dash 7. That's the mass number. Lithium with a mass number of 6. So that's sulfur with a mass number of 32. Now this is made of 90%. Lithium is made of 90% lithium uh, 7 and 10% um, lithium 6. So we need to learn uh, this formula now, percentage times mass. Okay, now we need to do that in brackets for every isotope there is. Now here there's two isotopes and in this question there's two isotopes. So we're going to do it twice. If there are three isotopes, we'd do it three times. If there's four isotopes, we'd do it four times. Okay, and then we need to add those together. And then we divide by 100. And that gives us our answer. Now all that's left to do is plug the numbers in. So 10% lithium-6, 10% times 6. Uh, 10 times 6 uh, plus 90%, uh, 90% times the mass number times 7. Uh, 90 times 7. Now the brackets mean we have to work that out first. So let's do 10 times 6 is 60, plus 90 times 7, well, 97 is 63, so that's 630. 630 and 60, 690. So 690 divided by that 100 is 6.9. That is not the answer to this question. That's the answer to a different question. You need to do the answer to this question. Sodium, we react with chlorine to make sodium chloride. Write a balanced symbol equation for this reaction. Okay, uh, so sodium is a metal, so you know that's just going to be Na. Chlorine is a non-metal. Well, you work out, you think about whether that's diatomic. So is it Cl or Cl2? You need to make that decision. To make sodium chloride, well, sodium is in group one of the periodic table. I'll give you a little clue. So it has a single positive charge, and chlorine is in group seven, so that has a single negative charge, and it forms an ion. Okay, uh, therefore is the formula NaCl or Na2Cl or NaCl2. You need to decide looking at those charges. Once you've done that, can you balance that for me, please? Good luck.